Hi, my name is Dr. David Kane, and I'm a chiropractor here at the Auckland Viaduct Harbour, as well as at our practice at 649 Remuera Road in Auckland's eastern suburbs. Now, I guess the whole reason we're making this video is we wanted to make sure that everyone's got an opportunity to understand in lay terms, so that means unscientific terms, what it means to have neck discomfort, what it, uh, can some of the common causes be, and what can be done about it. Um, because if you're anything uh, like a lot of our clients, you may have experienced horrible searing neck pain. Worst first thing in the morning, sometimes it comes on after sitting in front of your computer for a long period of time. You might get it driving your, um, driving your car to and from work, or if you're somebody who's sitting in a truck all day long up and down the country, then uh, you may experience this as well. Some of the things to keep an eye out for might be pins and needles into the hands and the fingers. Uh, occasionally people get headaches when their neck's not working uh, as well as it should. Um, and it's also that massive nuisance value. But nuisance value sometimes extends into periods when you just cannot get on top of it. It means it starts to affect your, uh, I guess, your interaction with your family, the time you're spending with your kids, and also uh, if you're losing sleep, then that's no good as well because the world needs a happier version of yourself. No one wants a grumpy you, trust me. We see a whole bunch of it here. Anyway, I'm gonna crack into it. I'm gonna show you some of the things we commonly see. We're gonna run through, I guess, the basic anatomy of how the spine works, and we're gonna give you a bit of a heads up as to what sort of things we do cover, okay? So the first thing is, we deal with a whole bunch of uh, what we call, I guess, mechanical neck pain, okay? Now, mechanical neck pain uh, really has five main uh, contributing factors to it. Okay, the first one would be if we've got damage to these little discs. Okay, we've got discs that separate each of the vertebrae into your neck. All right, so each of these indicate one bone. Now at the top we've got C1, he's also known as Atlas. Now down to, we've got C2 axis and then we've got C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 and then we go into the top part of the shoulder. So what we're dealing with is from here, right at the top, just underneath your skull, all the way down onto your shoulders. So that's what we've got. Now if we've got these discs and they've been damaged, so you might have had a whiplash injury or a car accident, uh, you might have been a rugby player and you've been compressed in a collapsed scrum or an Aussie rules player, somebody's come down hard onto your head or to your shoulders. Uh, you might have had somebody pull a chair out of underneath you and you've got this compressive force that goes all the way through your body. So generally what we say about uh, discs into the neck is lifting twisting injuries or twisting and compression injuries can sometimes cause damage to that disc. Now what it does, it can sometimes bulge out into the spine. Now that wouldn't be such a problem if we didn't have this rather important bit of anatomy back here that goes all the way inside the spine and we call that, and it goes all the way up into our brain and we call it the spinal cord. And now off the side of the spinal cord, what we've got what we call nerve roots. Okay, so off the side we've got nerve roots. Now these nerve roots branch off into big clusters of nerves. So we might have any of the ones that go into the arms. So it could be radial nerve, ulnar nerve, median nerve. Wherever they go, they have different jobs. Okay, and so if we've got a pinched nerve in through here, it's going to affect that nerve. But it's not just going to affect that nerve, it's going to affect the organs or the muscles downstream. And so that's why some people who get neck pain or neck problems can sometimes have pain that refers into their arm, tingling into their fingers. Um, and depending on whereabouts in the spine itself the, um, the tingling occurs, uh, and I'll give you an example, if we've got a C5 or C6 nerve root impingement, it's gonna affect these fingers. Um, C6, C7, we're going to be in through to here, and C7, C1 across these two fingers here. And that can be pins and needles, it can be weak grip strength, uh, sometimes it can be confused for carpal tunnel syndrome. So that's what can happen when we've got this nerve here that's been compressed. 
and that's when we've had an injury to the disc and that has caused a potential problem. So that's our first one. We're going to call him number one. We've got a disc problem. Okay, we've got a disc problem. And if you've had this sort of problem before, you're probably quite familiar with it because you need to have an MRI to confirm it, but there are a whole series of neurological tests you can do to see what level uh, that has actually occurred at. And so generally you'll know, you'll know, because it's that horrible discomfort that you're getting and sometimes you can't get away from it. We're clear on that. So we've got number one is our disc. Now number two, We've got these funny, big, fleshy red things that uh, pervade all of our body. And we call them muscles, and muscles have a very specific task. Now that task is to help us move. It's to help us turn our head side to side, Oof. to tilt our head down to the side, and it also keeps us up straight. And so a perfect example would be if we're sitting in front of a computer for a long period of time, they're gonna stop our head from falling off our shoulders and falling onto the desk. Not ideal if you want to keep a hold of your head. Eh? The old expression, keep your head on. Anyway, so if we've got muscles that are strained and these muscles go all the way down and they go in between the bones and they are responsible for twisting, tilting, but somehow we've injured it, whether we have, again, had an accident or we've been sitting stuck at our desk for a long period of time, these muscles have been uh, strained. And straining a muscle can, uh, I guess, release these chemicals into your body that act on what we call free nerve endings, um, mechanoreceptors into the body, nociceptors which actually detect pain. Uh, and, and these things here, they fire a message back to our brain that our brain interprets as discomfort. And sometimes it might be sharp pain, sometimes it might be a dull ache. Regardless, our brain's getting feedback from our body that there's been some damage and it might have been to that uh, muscle in through here. So that's the second one, we've got muscle. And so if we've got a muscle, and we're gonna call that a strain, okay? Muscles get strained. I think you know what's coming next. Because holding a lot of these joints together is what we call ligaments. In fact, it's not just what we call, a lot of people call them ligaments. In fact, anybody who deals with this stuff is gonna call them ligaments. And these ligaments go between each of the bones, they wrap up these the joints, so there's little joints between each of our um, bones just in through here. We've got joints in through there. Uh, and what they do is they encapsulate, so they're a bit like a glove that goes over things. Uh, if it's your joint, they, they wrap around the joint themselves and they keep that fluid that keeps the joint nice and lubricated um, in there like a balloon, okay? Like a reverse balloon. Uh, but what it also does, it attaches these uh, bones together. So if we've got bones in through here and they've been attached, they're going to stay stuck together because the ligaments is, well, that's their job. And so we can also, what we now refer to as sprain. So we sprain ligaments. And again, similar kind of thing happens when we strain a muscle as when we sprain a ligament. Now the thing is, with the ligament though, they're very, very uh, poor blood supply and they're very, very slow to heal. So that can be sometimes a big problem as well. So we've got disc and then we've got strains and now we've got sprains into the ligaments. Now the, uh, the fourth one I wanna talk about briefly is if we've had long-term strains or long-term sprains or we've had a poor posture, which we've put down to being stressed out, being stuck driving our car, being stuck at our desk, then what happens is these ligaments and these discs and these tissues can sometimes be permanently damaged. And this is where we've got what's called arthritis starts to creep in, okay? Now on previous videos, I've done this for the lower back, but what happens is if we've got arthritis creeping in, we have got little spurs, okay? We've got bits of bone that grow out they grow out where the spine normally should be, and that can impinge on ligaments. If it's in the back, it can impinge on the nerves, exactly the same way as that bulge in the disc can be, okay? And it can close down the amount of space between the bones as well. And so with that, an injury to those, uh, I guess the soft tissues, can result in your body defending itself by laying down extra bone, and the best example I can give you is thinking like the Eiffel Tower. 
It's got four big legs that go out for its foundation. Okay? Your body's way of doing that is by putting extra bone down there by way of these spurs. Now, arthritis itself is not a painful process, not unless it's rheumatoid arthritis or one of the nasty ones like psoriatic or, in fact, you know what, any of the inflammatory arthropathies, which is not really the purpose of this video. But if we've got those sort of spurs there, it's gonna lock the movement down. We're gonna lose that flexibility. Turning's gonna be harder. Bending's gonna be more difficult. That's what happens with that arthritic spur starting to appear. And of course, that makes sense though, that if we've got less room for the nerve, there's every chance that the same thing's gonna happen. We might get nerve discomfort that goes down in through to here. We might have pins and needles into our hands again. We might just have a really stiff neck because the lack of movement that our spine's now doing or allowing us to have is now being impacted on the muscles. And so we've got two or three things happening at once. Now, so what do we say then? We just said, I guess we'll, we'll call them spurs or arthritis. Okay, we're gonna call them spurs. And of course, the big one for us a lot of the time, in fact, I think what causes most discomfort out of all of them together, is when we've got these small joints at the back of our spine, okay? And so with these little joints, they look like, what can we do? We can do, we've got joints in your neck, and this is gonna be requiring a lot of imagination from you. So that might be one bone up here, I won't draw the rest of him, and that might be another bone down there. And when these two joints come together, okay, they come together in through here. And we call them facets or little, well, they, they're called facets because they look like a little face. And the way these little faces move, yeah, sorry, work, is they allow for gliding, okay? They allow for gliding of one bone over the other. Now, they are surrounded by a joint capsule, and that's the ligaments that I was talking about before. And inside of it, inside of it, there's this, a bit like oil, engine oil in your car, we've got this fluid called synovial fluid. Now, if you can imagine, we've damaged that, in, that um, joint by having a car accident. Again, any means that we've possibly done it, it might have actually been from not moving uh, for too long or being immobilized for too long. And so what we're left with here is these joints that start to get a little bit stuck. They start to get stuck. And it's a bit like having a stone in your shoe where that irritation over a long period of time starts to play on you. And the, the joints themselves become sore. Every time you move, it's a bit more irritating. It causes more discomfort. And that's where we find ourselves in that situation. Not ideal, absolutely not ideal, but we wanna make sure that if this is you, you find out exactly what it, you know, what's going on before you do anything about it. So that's kind of the brief, that's the brief. So we've gone over those, those five things here. Now of course there's a lot more causes of neck pain before people start commenting below. I'm aware of that, this is what I do, but these are the five really common ones. Uh, and if you don't agree with me, that's fine too. So we got five and that was, we're gonna say facet joints, facets, okay? So we've got facet joint injury. So that's the five things. And you go, well, okay, that's all very well and good. That's what happens. But what do you really mean by this, Dave? How can this affect me? Well, if you're somebody who's suffered neck discomfort for any period of time, you know how debilitating this can be. And it's more lifestyle, and it's more on the fact that you can't do things. It's the irritation. It's the fact that whatever you do is just not done quite as well as you should. And that's not perfect either. To find ourselves in this situation, you kind of go, you know what, there's some things we've done. And if you're a rugby player and you've chosen not to do anything about it, then that's just the hand you've been dealt. You know what, you've chosen not to do anything about it, chances are by the time you get to 35, 40, 45, or 50, this process where we've got degeneration of the spine, we've got injury to the, or permanent injury to the muscles, permanent injury to the ligaments between the vertebrae, those things start to dictate you. You know, I've got a rugby player's neck. 
I've just got technic as the new buzzword here. Okay, that's what's happening. But what can we do about it? Well, that's probably the most important thing, isn't it? We know it's here, what do we do about it? Well, I guess the best way for you to address it is to find somebody who's experienced in this sort of thing because uh, you cannot buy experience and you also can't buy, uh, buy good experience. Uh, and so the first thing you want to do is really find out, is the person I'm with able to help you? And there's only one way you can do that. That's the only one way to do it. And that is by going through the full, I guess, process with them. Find out, you know, make sure they're asking the right questions. And so there's a couple of steps and I'm going to outline them. And so whoever you go and see, make sure you're going through this process with them. The first one is really super important. If we want to ask questions, okay, we want to be asking questions. How long have you had it? What's the nature of it? Is there pain that refers down into your fingers? Are there any other things that you're not able to do? Have you got a good uh, control of your shoulders and the muscles? Are you getting headaches with it? Are you getting blinding, piercing headaches? Um, does it hurt when you cough or sneeze? What was the mechanisms of injury? What sort of things is this stopping you doing? That's probably the most important thing because understanding exactly what's happened is probably the most, I guess, key to you getting the best result. So go to somebody who makes, who asks lots of questions and not just silly ones, but questions about you know, how it's affecting your life. The second one is, go to somebody who's doing scans or relies on scans, okay? So somebody who's gonna refer you out for x-rays or take them in their office themselves. Now sometimes x-rays don't show exactly what we need to see, in which case MRIs uh, are even more important. So we're we'll looking at some scans and uh, we've also got some good technology we use which picks up muscle um, function side to side on the spine and also changes in temperature side to side. So we're gonna go x-rays, MRI, and we're gonna say, we'll go SEMG, just for one of them, which is surface electromyography, which is essentially to tell us how much muscle activity there is side to side. Okay, now the third one, and this might seem a bit obvious, but make sure you've got somebody who wants to examine you. They're going through a really thorough examination, okay? They're doing all sorts of tests on you. They're going to be looking at your flexibility. They're going to be looking at your function. They're going to be looking to see whether there's any um, referred discomfort. And they're also going to check out your limitations. And a really skilled physician or practicing, um, whoever you see, physiotherapist, chiropractor is obviously what I am. Uh, these guys here, they'll be going through a whole series of tests. They're going to combine it with the questions they've asked, the scans they've got, and they're going to give you um, I guess some feedback as to how you're limited in your movement, flexibility, and function. Now it's all good and well to have knowledge as to what's going on in your spine, asking you all the questions in the world, doing all the scans, which gives them some more information, and then doing an examination, which gives them even more information again. But with all of this, the beautiful part comes when they can come up with a plan that you guys both agree on, okay? So this is probably, you know what, each part of this is equally as important, but coming up with a plan. And I can't understate, I can't overstate how important that is. Because a plan will give you a path forward. It'll tell you what sort of things are we gonna be doing? Are we gonna be uh, doing some stretch flexibility? Are we gonna be adjusting you? We're gonna be doing some different treatment that's completely unique to your condition. Whatever it is, that plan's gotta be clear. So you gotta to go to somebody who's gonna give you a clear plan. And you don't want somebody who's gonna tell you what you want. As much as that might irk some people, you need somebody who's gonna tell you what you need. Because if you don't get somebody who's gonna give you what you need, you're gonna to go to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and before you know it, time is up, and you've got this bloody rotten neck and a horrible, horrible headache that has just ruined the last three or four years of your life. So get the plan. Now, 
The big thing is when it comes to this plan phase though, there's a couple of things that bring people unstuck because not everybody goes through with it. They just go, you know what? I want the quick fix. I want you to fix something that's been there for years. This is, it doesn't work that way, okay? Then you've got other people who want to do it for free. You know what, I want to spend as little money on myself as possible. And I don't want to do any of the exercises at home. So if you're one of those people, then I, I'm sorry to say it, this is probably not for you. There are things that you can do for yourself, but a bit like going for a run. I can't go for a run and give you my fitness. A bit like I can't get somebody else to study for a test for me and hope that I passed. It doesn't work. And the same thing happens with your spine, looking after yourself. You have to put the work in. You have to put the time in and you have to sometimes invest. But what I do know is this sort of work here can sometimes be penny to the pound. So much more affordable than surgeries. Because the surgeries, you know what? They come with risks. We're lucky here in New Zealand. We've got some of the best surgeons in the world, but they come with risks. Similarly, spinal injections come with risks. I mean, that's a no brainer, right? But what most people seem to think is okay is I'll have a Voltaren, I'll have a Nurofen, I'll have a Panadol. Worst case is I'm going to be on some kind of opioid medication, Oxycontin, Codeine, oh, that's fine, Gabapentin, Amitriptyline. All these medications, they do more than just dull your pain. They dull you. And they can also put a whole bunch of pressure on your kidneys, your liver, your um, every system in your stomach line. I mean, it can get punished. Voltaren, a lot of people can't have it because it upsets their stomach. So that's it. So what really interrupts, again, what I was talking about with that plan is, you know what, some people don't want to put in the time. They just go, you know what, I want it now, I want it here. Well, we're happy to get started here, happy this started now, but it doesn't mean things are going to be fixed straight away. And that's a big deal. And no matter who treats you, it's a fundamental law. Some things take time. If it took a while to get somewhere, it's going to take a while to get back. So it's time. The other part is money. And some people just don't want to invest in themselves. No matter how good it is, no matter how much money they've got, no matter how much, whatever they need, they've got it. They just choose, no, I'm just not into it. I don't think it can do what I say it's going to do. Or you say it's going to do. It doesn't work that way. You have to sometimes invest money. Because some of the most expensive decisions we make are the ones we never spend a cent on. Some of the most expensive decisions we make are the ones we never spend a cent on. And finally, it's the work. It's the people who don't want to do the work. It's the people who don't want to help themselves. It's the people who are going, you know what, it's all too hard. You know what, there's some things at the beginning don't have to be hard. You know what, if you break it down step by step, then things can be easier. Things can be easier. So I want you to go and find somebody. I want you to find somebody who's going to make sure they explain this to you. In fact, you've probably got a better explanation than you're going to get from a lot of other people. Uh, get someone who's going to ask these questions. Get somebody who's going to review your x-rays, your scans, your surface, you know, the muscle function. We're going to someone who's going to examine you properly. Someone who's going to make sure that every stone's been upturned. Every single system that is applicable to what you're talking about has been explored. And most importantly, in fact not most importantly, equally as importantly, somebody you're going to come up with a plan with, they're going to go through timing, how much it's going to cost, and what work you have to do and what work they're going to do. That's just, and that's that simple. So that's it. Neck pain, we'll make another video again on headaches. I probably went on a little bit long about it, but you know what? Any interference or problem with the neck can actually lead to headaches. It's a feedback mechanism. For whatever reason, all the joints in around here, they can go straight back up to the head and cause these headaches. 
And that might be a, that'll be a whole other video, just talking about the different sorts of headaches and what we can do to help you. Guys, if this has been useful, just think about it. You, you don't have to live with this you know, terrible, horrible, chronic discomfort that you may have in the past. If you found this video interesting, and look, you know what? For me, it just proves that I have to, I have to learn and revise all my anatomy and, and what I do to help people. So I love making these videos. Um, if you found this useful, just share it to somebody. They might like the information. They might not. I might get picked apart for saying something wrong. But you know what? The more you know, the better. We've hopefully put it in terms you can understand. Um, and if it's something that really resonates with you, you think that you and I can work together and you're in the Auckland region, just, you know what, get in touch with us. We've got enough information uh, below and beside this, uh, this video for you to get in touch with us. We want to make sure we give you the best. Uh, anyway, again, I'm Dr. David Kay. We look forward to seeing you at our office and hopefully we can do something that, uh, that helps you get rid of that neck discomfort.